gonna stay put I'm just gonna wait in the background Watching you talk to her I know this might look bad But I'm just gonna melt in the background Watching you lean into her What's up, y'all? Welcome to Tuesday Night Studio Sessions. My name is Sean. I'll be your host. Um, this is the pre-show, so can you hear me and can you see me? Those are the first two questions I like to ask. Um, tonight is a special night. Um, we have got a guest all the way from Queensland um, on the other side of the globe, and we're also giving away a hat, this little trucker hat tonight. 
So those are the two exciting things that are going to happen tonight. We've got a video from Stephen Drones that's going to be on the show. And then I'm going to show a drone video that is amazing by Gregory Lawler. That it's amazing that it made it back to the beach. <laughs> um, little tiny uh, DJI Mini and uh, made it back in high winds. So we're going to talk about that. But yeah, how was everybody's week? Did y'all have a good week? Um, let me know in the chat how things are going. Um, and yeah, we've got a lot of emojis tonight. I think this is the first chat that I've seen with so many emojis. So that makes me happy. It's a laid back crew tonight. Um, so we're going to get Gregory on here in a little bit and we're going to have some laid back conversation and just kind of hang out. Um, Gregory's done a lot of uh, um, live streaming on his channel with bringing guests in and using StreamYard. So we're going to we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about um, flying drones and anything else that tickles our fancy. So. Um, so, yeah, I don't have anything else to say, so we might as well bring Gregory in. <laughs> Let's bring him in. G'day, peoples. How's it going? Welcome G'day. from Australia. It's um, uh, quarter to quarter to ten in the morning here. <laughs> okay. So it's a, the start of a lovely day. Hopefully I'll get some droning in. So is it Monday or Tuesday? Or Wednesday? It's uh, Wednesday. It's Wednesday. So he's yeah, he's talking to us from the, the future. future. Yes. Yeah. I can tell you the world will survive another day. <laughs> nice. We'll be here tomorrow. It's good to know. <laughs> That's it's always handy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, I went on a trip to Israel um, back when I was in college, and we did it over New Year's Eve. So um, I celebrated New Year's Eve three times while we were in the air. Oh, um, you got to love that. So I thought that was really cool. It was like it was like every like 20 minutes. Yay, happy new year again. <laughs> I wouldn't like to be on a plane full of Australians celebrating New Year's three times in a row. They'd be pouring us off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, I'm, I'm uh, transitioning to retirement. I'm an old fella. I'm 63. Okay. Um, have a Bachelor of Arts in Humanities, specializing in, um, well, it's a multidisciplinary uh, degree, specializing in hi local history here in, here in Queensland. And, um, you know, it covered, goes across all sorts of spectrums, anthropology, cultural studies, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, a lot of useless information, but interesting. <laughs> That's cool. Another bed bunk guy. Yes, yes, this is my prison cell. <laughs> <laughs> we have very liberal prisons here, unlimited Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, if you can stream that good from prison, you're good. <laughs> yeah, 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 doing really well. <laughs> All the way across the country. Uh, or, I mean, the world. Yeah, if, if only the prisoners would love this. <laughs> yeah. It'd be bedlam. So, um... <clears throat> And then, uh, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm a I'm a truck driver. Okay. Uh, a trucky. I normally do interstate, but COVID's sort of played havoc with that. We've only just recently come out of our our most recent lockdown here in the southeast corner of Queensland. Uh, okay. We had, I think, uh, ten cases, and the government slapped us into lockdown, which I have no issue with at all, because I like to live to be a bit older. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm I'm high on the list of. Uh, compromised of you know I'm a heavy smoker since i was 14 and uh in my age factor puts me in the high risk category so um yeah. i take it serious and i have i live with my my beautiful daughter and my grandchildren so i'm very very lucky that's awesome i get to play with my babies every day and yeah. still get to play i am the patriarch <laughs> <laughs> that's cool you shall obey <laughs> It, although they just don't listen. <laughs> yeah. I'm just fat. So that's, that puts me in high risk. I've got high well, blood yeah. pressure and diabetic and. We will definitely so. put you in the high risk category. At, at the moment, the um, we're having a bit of a failure by our government in the rollout of the vaccine. So very few of the population have been vaccinated and the government assures us if we don't get up to 70% vaccination rate, 
um, we will just keep getting locked down every time the disease shows, rears its ugly head. And of course, we had the Delta strain uh, that's running rampant. The state of the south, I mean, New South Wales weren't quick at locking down. And now they're getting hundreds and hundreds of people every day infected. Oh, and yesterday's was 360 odd people. And a hundred of those were out in the community while infectious. So oh, wow. they're a long, long way from coming out of lockdown down there. Do you, do you guys, so you're in lockdown. When you're not in lockdown, do you guys have to wear masks everywhere? And Yep. We're on a uh, mask mandate now until uh, at least Christmas, and oh, wow. in, including kids now, um, children above 12. Um, the, the latest outbreak, the Delta variant, uh, ran through about three high schools and uh, in a primary school here in Brisbane, um, infecting heaps and heaps of kids. So it's it's not an adult thing anymore. It's uh it's affecting everyone. Yeah. And the scary part of the Delta strain, of course, is that you just have to walk past someone. You don't have to be in close proximity or there for fifteen minutes. They've just got to be in the same shopping centre as you, and you have a chance of um, contracting the virus. It's wow. uh it's scary. <laughs> yeah, here um, we've got kind of like. We've got a lot of controversy where some people are getting vaccinated, some people are not getting vaccinated, and both both sides are very strongly opinionated about that. And then, um, and then there's, um, but they, they've they've eased up. You know, we can go to like restaurants and stuff like that with um, without wearing a mask, but you still see people walking around with masks on. And um, I was terrified beginning of beginning of covid and i didn't even want to go see anybody and we live with my my mother's in her 70s and so um so the kids are the kids will probably live through it i might yeah. live through it my wife might live through it but it'll probably kill my mom and so we we tried everything that we could to keep it out of our house and yeah. uh once we got vaccinated then we kind of went out um like i still i still haven't gotten it but i do know people that have been vaccinated that got it people that haven't been vaccinated that got it i know people that died from it like personal friends that died from it so um <clears throat> whenever when so whenever anybody has like a strong argument as to what they believe i have an example for every everyone <laughs> like uh, that's good that's good. it's gonna kill somebody around you yeah. it might not kill you but it might you know one of those kind of things that's so just it. Stop licking people. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, there were, um, you know, I mean, we've got the, our deniers here. and uh, But thankfully, our, our laws are slightly different. And uh, if you go, if I was to go outside today without my mask on and uh, the Queens, uh, Queensland police officer spotted me, that would be an $1,800 on the spot fine if I refused wow. to put the mask on after the cop offers, offers me a mask. And I say, no, it's here you go, sunshine. 1800 bucks. Wow. Keep it up and we'll arrest you and take you off to the cells if you don't put the mask on after that. Wow. So, yeah, that, we don't muck around. Our police don't muck around. Our laws are different. No bill of rights here. Yeah. I've got a, a friend on YouTube. Um, he lives over by the uh, Australian Opera House. Oh, Sydney. And, uh, yep. Yeah. And so he, he's, he's mentioned several times about their lockdowns and like his, his YouTube channels really suffered from it. Like his whole, he's, he does 360 cameras and his old, whole YouTube channel is taking pictures of things other than yeah. his apartment. You know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. you can only take yeah. so many pictures of your own apartment and, and then it yeah. gets really boring really quick. So, um, you know, he, he's done hundreds of amazing shots of the, of the opera house and that will always look interesting no matter where you are. And the bridge yeah. that goes kind of across the river there the and Sydney stuff. Sydney Harbour Bridge. That we call that the coat hanger. Oh, really? It's, it's, you know, it looks like a big coat shaped like a coat hanger. So that's called that's the funny. coat hanger. <laughs> we give everything nicknames here. <laughs> everything yeah. and everyone gets a nickname. Mine's, regrettably, is the mouth. <laughs> oh, is that a? Is it's that, it's a good or bad much? thing. Um, it's a compliment in that um, my mates will say that, you know, I, I can talk us into trouble. I can talk us straight back out of trouble again. And yeah. 
I have, I have good people handling skills when it comes to police officers and angry people. And uh, I tend to get very, you know, conciliatory and, you know, look, come on, we, there's better ways of doing this, lads. You know? <laughs> You're good at calming and, people's nerves? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, yeah it, it works out well. Uh, and I avoid getting my head knocked off. <laughs> yeah. Or and, and avoid getting arrested. <laughs> you know, you just got to be polite nine times out of ten. Polite and calm. And everything's everything's hunky dory. If you've been speeding, well, boom, you earned it. You deserve a ticket. Right. Yeah. yeah. That, that's what I tell my kids. Like, <laughs> you have to take responsibility for your actions. Like, 100%. Don't, don't just worry about getting caught. Just don't do anything that you have to get caught for. <laughs> like, just, yep. Yeah, well, you, you do you it right. Imagine as a professional driver, my license is my life. So um, here, yeah. if you accumulate 12 demerit points within three years, you lose your license for six months. And, uh, yeah. and that would be devastating for me. Good Lord, if I couldn't drive, I don't know what I'd do. <laughs> got, yeah. to, got, to, got to get in my car every day and, and go for a spin, you know, just to make sure I get the kilometres under my ass. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Just, I, uh, uh, sorry. I lost my job um, several years back and I, I had to drive Uber for six months just to pay the bills. Yep. And uh, this one guy paid me on the side to take him to a concert. Um, but he, there was this one part of the interstate that I knew was a traffic, like I knew it was a speed trap and I knew, you know, it goes from like 75 miles an hour down to 55 miles an hour. And it's like, like an eight mile stretch of that. And then it goes back up to 75 miles an hour. And it was, it was late at night and there wasn't really anybody out, but he was like, he was like, what are you doing? Why are you slowing down? And I was like, I'm not getting a ticket for you. <laughs> Like, yeah, exactly. if, I, if I get a ticket, then I, I lose the, my income right now and it's, it's not worth it. No, no. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the same. Um, I plot at the speed limit. People call me boring and I go, well, I might be boring, but we're all going to get there alive and, uh, and I'm not going to lose my damn license. <laughs> and yeah. I hate giving the government money. <laughs> it just burns yeah. me. And our fines are pretty severe. And we've got speed cameras everywhere. Oh, wow. You know, and there's no warning signs. You just and we've actually got camera ca uh, cameras now. For um, they look down inside your car to see if you've got your mobile phone out. If you're using your mobile phone, really? They can yeah. they can find yeah. figure that out. Yep, yep. They got these gantry like phones that they on a trailer and they park it on the side of the road and it goes out over the over the road and looks straight down in your car. And if your if your mobile phone's flashing or it's in your hand, it's a thousand dollar fine. And uh, four demerit points, and uh, and it doubles if you get caught here in Queensland within a year committing the same offence twice. Um, then it's double fine, double points. So wow. you know, two two tickets, and uh, and that's your license gone, and plus uh, an expensive uh, lesson in don't be an idiot. Three grand's worth of fines. Wow. What? Yeah. So what if they're looking down in your car and you're not wearing pants? Well, uh, apart from that? making a great Christmas clip for the boys at the <laughs> Christmas party, <laughs> you should see what you see from a truck. <laughs> People don't oh, think yeah. you can see them. You can look down. Yeah, down you're looking everybody. in going, wow, okay, that's interesting. You shouldn't be doing that in public, matey. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Um, <laughs> oh, you, some of the sights I've seen are hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Eat More Possum asked, um, have you ever driven one of those truck trains? Uh, road trains? No, no. I, I'm, I'm an old uh, furniture removalist, uh, a furniture mover, I think you call them over in the States. Okay. And uh, and I always worked on the theory that if um, I got my semi-trailer license, or semi as you call them, um, they, the biggest semi um, furniture trailer you can get is 110 cubic metres, which is a hell of a lot of furniture. Squeeze three or four houses in one of those things. And, uh, and then you know, you drive off into the middle of nowhere and someone would expect me to load and unload it on my own. So I refuse. I kept to uh, just a heavy rigid license. And okay. uh, the biggest biggest pan you can get on a on a rigid is 65 metres. So that makes me feel a lot better that I could, the max I'll have to do is 65 rather than 110. Yeah. Yeah, it just seems sensible to me, but it upsets my bosses and they go, oh, why, why, get your truck, your semi-license. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> I will not. So, um, yeah, no road trains for this one. Plus, they're dangerous. They really are. Well, that back trailer sneaks off the road 
and you'll see what the roads look like out at um, in that outback Queensland clip, and that's road train territory. That there's there were tons and tons of road trains screaming up and down that road, and uh, that's the Lansborough Highway, and uh, that rear trail, the third trailer gets off into the into the the side of the road. It'll pull the whole truck off the road. Oh wow! Right on its side. So yeah, they scare me. <laughs> And uh, when they come towards you, sometimes that third trail is flicking. It'll flick out in front of you and flick back. And uh, so you've got to keep your wits about you, keep your eyes open when one of those things is coming at you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, I mean, when one goes past you, you, you can feel the kinetic energy and you just can imagine what it'd be like impacting with it. You just, even in a, in a large truck, like I drive a 26-ton truck, and uh, it would just destroy me. And yeah. probably the poor driver of the other truck as well. But uh, it would definitely destroy my truck like there was no tomorrow. Wow. Yeah. So, not, great not that I was asking there. if you know Ari. <clears throat> Ari, the uh, American lawyer? Um, no, I think Ari is the uh, – there's a uh, – he does live streaming too. He has oh, like okay. a uh, – he's got like this, this uh, green screen set up with like – I don't, I don't know how to describe his set. It's more like a like a newsroom. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He's got like a big wooden, I think like a wooden desk with, um, but. Well, I, I normally do my live streams from the lounge room <laughs> so that people stop saying, are you in a prison? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get sick of that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, You should put so, like a uh, fake hole in the wall. In the back, like you're trying to dig <laughs> yeah. yourself out or something. Escape. <laughs> yeah, it would, would be funny. <laughs> yeah, that's why this uh, this beautiful flag here is the Australian rebel flag, and uh, and that's why that's up there. Everyone's going, oh, you've got no colour. It looks like a prison cell. So the only <laughs> thing I could find was my flag, and I thought, oh, I'll just whack that up there. <laughs> Maybe they won't think it's a prison. <laughs> nice. And at the time uh, uh, before this last um, lockdown. I was um, driving tippers here in Brisbane, taking bitumen out, asphalt for roads and that. And uh, so it was hilarious. I'd go, oh, yes, I'm in prison and I work on a road gang. <laughs> and they go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you sit there thinking, God, you're so gullible. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Australian humour is a bit dry and, uh, and sarcastic at times. <laughs> yeah. So Eat More Possum asks, is trucky the Australian term for truck driver? Yes. Yes, we get very offended at trucker. <laughs> oh, trucker? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That um, if somebody says trucker here, you every trucky in the room is just going to spin around and launch at you and go, no, we're Australians. You use trucky, except it would be put with uh, eight or nine profanities in it. Australians swear like we breathe. So you don't want to win the trucker hat, do you? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a trucky hat. It's a trucky hat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. That'll yeah, work. Yeah, that'd be cool. People would be going, what's that symbol mean? And I'll be able to go, oh, you got to check this drone side out, man. Yep, I'm the Superman of YouTube. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it'd be, uh, uh, and if, if I was fortunate enough to win it, I would uh, go out flying and put that hat on and, and show you all me standing there with, with my Gertie, as I call my mini. She has a name. This is this is Gertrude. As you can okay. see, there's there's not much to them. Two hundred and forty nine grams and and she can handle the wind much, much more than a lot of people will think. But uh yeah, you just gotta use a, a few tech different techniques, get down low when the wind's strong. And yeah. uh it, and when I was doing it out west the winds were phenomenal. And uh, I was working on the theory that there is just endless miles of paddock. And that if it blew away, it, it's got to crash to ground eventually. And I would just have to tramp through the scrub until I found her. <laughs> That's funny. Well, um, I have um, refresh. So you, no carcass, no insurance. I've actually, yeah. um, I've got a picture there uh, of me when I retrieved my Gertie. I, I flew her into the, the that forest lake that you've seen. I um, accidentally dropped her in the middle of that. And uh, it was quite hilarious. I squealed like a girl and then bolted off into the lake with everyone just standing there looking at me going, look at this madman. <laughs> yeah. 
and uh, and couldn't find her that day. Had to come back the next day with a canoe and and uh, and my um my daughter's partner, and we had to wade around in the lake, duck diving and swimming around. It took about an hour and a half, but we eventually retrieved her and uh, sent her off for refreshing and, and got a new one, but named her Gertie as well. Oh, okay, so you sent it off. So I was going to ask you if you dried it out and it still works, but uh, you I tried that. Off. I tried that. I did the, um, you know, put it in in uh, rice <laughs> and uh, and everything. But the the lake has a lot of um, biology in it, and so um, yeah, no. As soon as I turned it on, it started. It made all the nice noises, and then all you could hear was crackle, 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 and then the lights went out. And I went, ah, okay, no. that didn't work. <laughs> yeah, you found I was, the I was hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, I mean, if you if you drown your drain, you're better off just getting another one. You just never know when it's going to die. That was what um, the advice from DJI is. Yeah, you might revive your drone, but you know, yeah. you just never know when it's going to go ping and drop out of the sky. Yeah, to be safe, you want to you want your drone to be tip top when you get it up in the air. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, speaking of your your mini, you talked about the weight. Is there any? what are the rules for flying your drone in Australia? Like here we have 400 feet up in the air. We've got under like anything above 250 um, grams. I think it is. You yeah. need to register your drone. Like, do you have any different rules like that in Australia? Um, yeah. Um, we've <clears throat> um, just recently brought in the drone registration. And um, if luckily my drone, because it's a, uh, it's under mm -hmm. 250, um, I don't have to pay the rego. But um, the rego is twenty bucks a year per drone. Okay. And which is reasonable, I suppose. But um, they're, they're slowly tightening the nails. We we're allowed to um, one hundred and twenty meters, which is roughly four hundred feet anyway. Um, you can't fly within thirty meters, ninety feet of um, people. You can't fly over the top of people. You can't fly over roads. Um, you can't fly over houses, buildings things like that you're not supposed to without permission of the the owners oh really of course yeah yeah they're, they're, they're pretty strict and uh and casa the fine start i think at about 640 bucks and you know if you if you're really bad then you'll have to front the magistrate and the fines can be astronomical 10 yeah. grand and all sorts of nasty things so yeah yeah but you know a lot of people here just don't pay any attention that's typical Australian attitude. Oh, there's a law that says you can't do that. Oh, I better do it then. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. clears throat> but um, licensing is an interesting issue. Like, um, because I publish on YouTube, I have to have a, um, a license to fly my drone. Don't have to do the full um, repel license, but you have to, uh, you know, sit there and answer 10 silly safety questions and, and then, um, you know, Register your drone and and have your dry, your flying license with you when you're out flying, in case the authorities front up and go, "Oi, where's your where's your license?" Huh. Because they so, regard YouTube as commercial. That if you put your your um footage up, regardless of whether you're getting paid for it or not, um, CASA regards that as as commercial flying. Interesting. And you must be licensed. Um, okay. um there's a, a a special license. It's under seven kilos. Uh, license so long as you're not you know uh, yeah under seven kilos you can get away with using the license I use so I can fly anything really uh, on my license but um, you know if you wanted to uh, to do things like fly over crowds or roads and stuff you would need to um, have a repel license and you would probably need someone even with a with a better license it's like two stages to it there's a guy who can plan flights and stuff like that and then he makes an application to casa and casa has the final say which was interesting because a, a friend of mine tried to um, apply to fly his mini and as far as casa's concerned um line of sight is 50 meters that if your if your mini is more than 50 meters away from you you can't see it you know? yeah i mean that's true it gets more than 10 meters from me i can't see the bloody right thing. it's a tiny little dot <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, where is it? Where is it? So I normally take a spotter with me, and uh, in the hope that they'll keep an eye on it. Plus, looking for aircraft, mm -hmm. you know, we we have to, you know, usual rules. You must land immediately, 
any aircraft enters your airspace. Is the, does the spot is the spotter allowed to use binoculars? No, no, it all no. has to be line of sight, and uh, you know, but they're mainly you know keeping an eye out for people, <coughs> right. people and aircraft, and then of course I'm always going, you know, where's the drone? Where's the drone? And nine times out of ten they're going, oh, I don't know, <laughs> and then yeah. we hit return, hit return. <laughs> It'll come back. Yeah. So far. <laughs> we've we've but, got yeah. a technica technicality over here that like um there's like the further furtherance of a business and then there's um making money. So yeah. that like if you have your YouTube your video up on YouTube with and you're drawing ad revenue on that specific video, yeah. then you need your license for that. Um I I know some people that um, they they do like videography for weddings, yeah. And they'll they'll do like line items and they'll throw in the drone footage for free, and that's kind of how they're getting around that. Oh, okay. um, but if it really came down to it, and the FAA, you know, looked at their books, they'd probably get fined for that. Yeah. Well, well, um, our our. Um, our organization but that's CASA, which is the civil aviation authority okay and uh and they control all the sky from the ground up um even over your property and you you technically if i fly around your house um they're, they're really technically there's nothing you could do about it see you that's could, interesting yeah. like in america like you own you own like your land that you can stand on, but yeah. you don't own the airspace above you. Yeah. And you Same don't here. own, you don't own like, um, no, no, no. Mineral rights are reserved to the government here. Yeah. Mineral rights. That's what it is. Yeah. And so you yeah. don't own the ground under you. <laughs> yeah. So you just yeah. own like the little spot that you're on. You can, you can get a prospector's license here and, um, you can notify someone that you're going out onto their property to uh, search for gold or whatever. And uh, and there's, so long as you send notification, there's not a great deal I can do about it. And uh, and that annoys some people. But uh, thankfully yeah. here, we don't have too many guns. So, you know, at least you're not going to get shot. <laughs> right. And uh, and if you do take a drone down, that's actually an act of terrorism. Um, Cast yeah, regards drones federal, as aircraft. Yeah, it's a federal crime here too, to shoot yeah, a drone yeah. down. They're, they're gonna um, they're gonna come at you hard here for doing that. A few idiots have shot drones out of the sky and learned to their to their detriment that you just don't do that sort of stuff. Yeah, you just can't bring them down. They are aircraft, and CASA treat them exactly the same. Yeah, which is and like enough. and people don't realize how far their bullets go. Like mm. if you miss the drone and then you hit the helicopter, that's <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. Plus, what goes up has to come down. Right, has to come down. Somewhere. It's yeah, it's going to land somewhere, and it might hit a kid or dog yep. or turtle. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's it's well, you shoot a turtle here, you're going <laughs> to you can't kill any wildlife here except kangaroos, our national symbol. We eat them. <laughs> what? So you can eat kangaroos, but you can't eat anything yeah. else. That's it. You can't go out and start shooting. Dingo. Well, you can shoot dingoes because they're regarded as pests, but um, you can't shoot any other wildlife. You can't kill crocodiles. You can't kill snakes. You can't kill anything uh, except kangaroos and uh, and poor old dingoes, which is a shame because they're a beautiful dog. I have one of them, and yeah. uh, and they're a gorgeous animal. So, Mind you, if you had sheep, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you can't you can't go get your own meat, but you can buy meat. From like the yeah, well, you, people yeah, that are there are people like kangaroo man, but they're licensed, and uh, and you have to have written permission of the landowner to go on the land. Same with pigs. We have, you know, wild pigs are an invasive species, so they're regarded as a pest. But regrettably, so are so are our mates, the dingoes. And if people would just realise if they left the dingoes, build up back up their numbers, they would get rid of the pigs and the foxes and and all the other feral, the feral cats and things like that. They would hunt them down and eat the lot. Yeah. And uh, there, there are a few stations now out west that are starting to learn that lesson and will foster a, uh, a, a pack on their land. 
and uh, and you know they'll lose a couple of sheep every now and again, but what they gain in not having the the feral pests roaming the neighbourhood is great. Oh, you might hear my grandson in the background having a bit of a cry. He's only just reaching two, so he's at that oh, terrible yeah. two stage. Oh, that's so, yeah, fine. Poor little bunny, but he's a gorgeous little thing. I love him. That's cool. Um, so the I have a question for you. Yeah. Um, how accurate is Crocodile Dundee? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. That, you that was my childhood was watching. <laughs> yeah. If you did that to a water buffalo, it would trample you into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Do, 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 do. No, yeah. no. If you walked up to a buffalo and did that, it would just kill you. They're, they're an introduced species as well. They cause horrific damage to our um, to our country. Uh, because yeah. all hard hooved, there were there were never any hard hooved animals here. So hard hooved animals um, compact the earth, which kills our native grasses. Our native grasses don't seed. They um, they they're a bit like underground root systems that grow they grow from that. So if cows and things and horses tramping on the ground compact it, then the grass can't get up to the to the sun and it eventually dies off. Which is a shame. Yeah. So. Um, like you can't take a horse into a national park here. That's a, that would be an offence unless you had a permit because of the damage they do. Wow. Yeah, same with I. I can't take um, I can't take my husky into the national park. <laughs> I can take my dingo, but if the ranger saw it, they'd probably shoot it. Yeah. You know, if a farmer sees my ding, they'd shoot him, and, uh, and there wouldn't be anything I could do about it except go over there and break the gun over the head or something. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but no, I'm, I'm an advocate for, um, for letting the, for leaving our dingoes alone. And, you know, they, they, they're the apex predator of the country. So they keep everything else balanced. Okay. You know, like rabbits, rabbits, another introduced species that causes horrific damage to our country. So yeah, the dingoes just love them. You know, ooh, rabbit. <laughs> And, uh, you know, people say they're cowardly and that, but they're very timid. They don't like humans for good, good reason. <laughs> we tend to kill yeah. them on sight. And uh, so, but they're very timid and um, very, very pack orientated. Orientate. My mate, if um, family members are cool, but anyone else arrives on the front door, they're going to be met by a very ferocious animal that's trying to actually hurt them, which okay. is cool because I live in a, in a, you know, sort of strange little suburb that uh, has a bit of crime in it and people running around, breaking into houses and stuff. I have nothing to worry about. No one comes to my yard. They hear hear him going off and they just go, no, 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 we'll pick next door. <laughs> nice. <laughs> little guard dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's he's brilliant. He um, Even the police, um, not for nasty matters, but occasionally the cops will lob on your doorstep to check something out. And uh, yeah. and they ring from the front gate and say, can you get your dog in? <laughs> and yeah, and I go, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And then they immediately go, is that a dingo? You go, oh, no, 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 Queensland Kelpie. <laughs> and they go, oh, you sure? Yeah, 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 honest. <laughs> because uh, in Queensland, it's illegal. And um, yeah, they'll destroy it. So yeah, okay. no, nah, Queensland Kelpie. Which is funny because the Kelpie is actually bred from uh, Scottish sheepdogs and dingoes. It was uh, an experiment by some mad Scotsman who came out here because dingoes have a natural immunity to um, ticks. And ticks are a real issue here. We have a thing called a paralysis tick. And uh, that gets into a dog or, or horses, cattle. Um, it'll, uh, it'll cause paralysis and kill them. Oh, wow. But um, the, our, our wildlife has a natural immunity to um, the poison from the dingoes, uh, from the ticks. Like if my ding got a tick, I could take the tick out and he would recover. If my husky got it, it would cost me an absolute fortune to save her life. Wow. I think last time it was um, $370 per injection and uh, plus hospital stay and all that sort of rubbish. and get quite expensive. And no guarantee that the dog will survive. But the so, ding will. 
So is a dingo Sorry. like a is it like a coyote where it's like a pack? In, they're like take down animals by in the pack. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're yeah. very um, pack orientated. Um, like I'm on the head of the pack here, and um, and the dingoes have a, a really strange habit. They lick your mouth. It's how they greet each other. They when they meet up, they all lick each other's mouths. So it's a uh, <laughs> It's a, it's just one of their rituals. So you, you got no choice. You know, it's just going to lick your mouth. But you know, I've, I haven't died yet from it. <laughs> so they French you know kiss I mean? each other all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know they just <laughs> cross the mouth and you go, oh, for God's sake, you know. Uh, no, people freak no. out when they see it. They just go, that dog just licked your mouth, and you go, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it. It's, 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 a, it's a dingo thing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, and I mean, it, you got to build <clears throat> rapport with them. Like um, when he was a puppy. They're, they're an incredibly um, strong animal and their jaws open wider than the average dog because they're not actually a dog. They've got their own genus. And uh, I can't remember what it is. It's Canis or something silly like that instead of canine. It's Canis or, or something like that. But their jaw unhinges further. And, um, and when he was a puppy, when I first got him, he got me by the back of the head in his jaws and he had control of me. It scared the living daylights out of me. I thought, my God, and he was only a little fella then. I mean, if he was to get my head now, I don't think I'd be able to uh, probably get him off. But um, wow. back then he was smaller, so I pinned him to the ground immediately and dominated him as the pack leader. It's all dog psychology. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, you've got to be the pack leader. And, yeah, and they're cool. I love them. They're an absolute he, – This he's the second one I had. My first one used to travel in the truck with me. And uh, God help anyone who tried to speak to me through the window of the truck, you know, transport police and police or anyone for that matter sticks their head up at that window. The dog's going to come over my shoulder and try biting their faces off, which uh, leads to some funny incidents. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'm going to show a video by Stephen Drones. And oh, since you're the guest, I want you to commentate. All right. Okay. Be nice. Always. <laughs> what sort of drive is it? Uh, you need Type in 8 Plus. It's a helicopter. Looks like Brisbane in the background there. <laughs> so once a week, I believe Steve's doing these um, these shots of this um, construction site. Yeah, I think this is week five. Right. As you can see, the progress. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's getting tricky with his editing. Yeah. Better than me. <laughs> Still can't get used to you people driving on the wrong side of the road. No, y'all are the ones that ride on the drive on the wrong side. <laughs> we drive on the right side. <laughs> yeah. Yes. See what I, I did there? <laughs> <laughs> We're left-hand drivers. And the steering wheel's on the right-hand side. So I believe this used to be a dog racing track. That's I think right, that's what yeah. he said. For me, um, because um, the Mini doesn't have, you know, um, any sort of uh, anything extra apart from manual flying, I use DroneLink to, um, to do all my automation. And uh, I would set it up and just fly that every week with my drone link, and you'd then do a time lapse. It'd look it'd look good. But um, regrettably, the only construction we've got going on around here are building blocks of flats. Yeah. And uh, they they get boring. But that was interesting. Now, Steve, you you really know how to fly that baby. <laughs> and I think I think octo chopters are just sexy i'd love to fly one of those and aspire with the legs 
the landing gear. I just think the landing gear is so sexy. I want one that I can make the landing gear go up and down. <laughs> I reckon I just yeah. fly around for the first hour going, landing gear up, landing gear down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I think my favorite part of the, the unique Typhoon H and the Inspire is that you don't have to move your drone to point your camera. And so everybody's always talking about how, like how many minutes can you be up in the air? Or, you know, it, yeah. the battery goes down too fast or whatever, but it takes a lot of, a lot less energy to hover and point your camera mm -hmm. in a direction than it does to turn the, the whole thing. Yeah. And like your mini on the, on the, is it a sea or yeah. ocean? Is it the ocean? Um, that's the ocean. Yeah. It's called the coral sea, but that's the Pacific ocean. Okay. So like, yeah in that wind, you know, trying to turn your drone and yeah, all that. I, I should have um, got you to post up the, uh, the raw footage of, uh, of that outback Queensland one, because you actually do see a road train um, screaming down the highway there. And I have to actually wait for it to go past before I illegally cross the road, which is why I, I took it out because if um, Cal CASA during the lockdown, yeah. um, well, the CASA inspections, inspectors had nothing better to do but sit there on YouTube and check out everyone's drone footage. And, uh, and a few of us got knocked off for, um, for the various illegal things we did when we were flying our drones and posting them on air, which is just not real bright. There was one poor bugger who um, uh, flew, uh, drove his four-wheel drive through the floods and was filming himself with his drone. And so he got knocked off for not only flying his drone in an um, emergency area, in a declared emergency. He also got done for driving through floodwaters. That's against the law here. Oh, wow. $800 fine for driving through floodwaters. Like, I've got this great footage of me going through some floodwaters out west. But, um, yeah, no. Nah. I'll never put that up on YouTube. I'll get a, a bill in the mail. <laughs> yeah. Or a phone call from CASA, and you don't want that phone call. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. They they just go. They're very nice about it. I mean, they you know, it's all more about trying to educate you than than uh, being punitive. But if you were silly and didn't answer correctly, yeah, they'd hammer you like there was no tomorrow. Or as a really agree, you know, a serious offence, then yeah. you'd get hammered. Like the air restriction zones all around me. I've got a, an airfield less than five kilometres from me. So um, if I had a, a bigger drone, I wouldn't be able to fly at all. But because I'm, I've got the Mini, they've relaxed the rules as far as the micros go. And um, so I can actually put it up so long as I, uh, you know, it'll tell you exactly how high you can fly. Like it, down, down at Forest Lake, on the left of the lake, I can only go to 60 metres, and uh, which is about 200 feet. And uh, on the right, oh, 100 feet or something. And, uh, and over the lake itself, I can, once I get past my takeoff point, I can go up to 120 metres. But it's also an, it's a flyover route for our major airport, Brisbane Airport. So even a jet, you know, thousands of feet up in the air, I've got to land. Yeah. And, uh, and wait. But that's cool. And, you know, you've got to, you know, you're supposed to at least anyway have a plan, you know, you're emergency secondary landing point and all that sort of stuff yeah and uh, and keep a log that's the only drawback once you're licensed you got to have a log book and record your flying and uh if casa comes along and goes want to see your log book sunshine and you don't have it boom you're done oh wow yeah yeah like if you were to accidentally fly into something and cause damage they, they're going to ask for your log book and your license and then you're, whoops. Does, you got so, a thing called Skyscope. It can detect a drone and can detect you. It can't tell your name yet. They haven't made us turn on the ID. But yeah. um, they can tell where you're standing. And they can come and get you. Interesting. While you're up there. Yep. It detects you. And that's that, every airport now has one. And your log in the app doesn't is that's not good enough. You have to write write your own log. Yep, yep. You got to have a you got to have a physical hard copy of a logbook, and um, you know write down location, time, distances, mm -hmm. heights, all that sort of stuff. 
and then you know then they can check that and of course naturally they're going to say we want to see your uh your electronic logs as well <laughs> right Just compare sure them that they match <laughs> yeah oh you said you flew here but you were over here buddy yeah but yeah you you'd get done like a dinner yeah but like i say that you know it's more of at this stage they're more interested in educating us right and um, being punitive there's people who have you know there was one guy he was looking at uh, about 10 grand's worth of fines for um his mistakes and um Cass has spun around and just gave him one fine of 640 bucks and just said look we'll we'll overlook the others here's your 640 bucks don't be a don't be a nasty boy don't be a naughty boy again yeah and of course this guy's going i'll never fly again <laughs> right but uh yeah I mean, but Casa let him stew for a couple of days. They did the initial interview and then they said, well, you know, we'll make a determination and get back to you. <laughs> so he had to sit there panicking that he was going to be slapped with about 10 grand's worth of fines. Wow. And, uh, yeah, that would have been a stressful, stressful wait. <laughs> yeah. Just to get told, oh, all right, we'll just find you 640. <laughs> well, let's play your drone video. Let's see what. Yeah. 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 I won't comment see on it. What see what you can do oh, no, I, saying, i'll have to because there's some good stories in it <laughs> yeah i want you to talk about the the reef and all the stuff that you told me yep. earlier yeah, this is Bagara beach in um, central queensland on the coast flying out over the coral sea pacific ocean heading towards argentina at the moment <laughs> and uh and of course you'll see that there's not a great deal of wave activity because that's the beginning of the great barrier reef extends from there all the way up to the top of Queensland, about 1,400 miles. And uh, it's absolutely beautiful end of the world. And that is the scene of the Battle of the Coral Sea. It's straight out there. The, um, the local residents were uh, able to go down the beach that night and watch the flash of the guns and hear the roar of the cannons. And then a few days later, of course, the bodies started to wash up on the shore. But, uh, yeah. So there's a, a piece of world history there, and that's how close we came to getting knocked off by the Japs. It's a beautiful end of the world. That's looking north, and up there is the Mon Repos Green Turtles um, Hatchery. It's a, a, a national park. Technically, I can fly there, but I have to actually fly 100 metres higher than what I'm allowed to, because you're not allowed under 500 feet um, in a national park, in a marine park. You have to fly 500 feet up in the air? Yeah, yeah. When we're restricted to, you know, like use four. But if you fly over a marine park, you have no, no, um, you just simply have to fly at 500. You cannot fly under that over a marine park. That's looking to the south. It's a beautiful end of the world. And you can see the coral under the water there. I mean, it's not, you know, spectacular coral like the Barrier Reef, but it's the start of the reef. There's also crocodiles and all sorts of weird, dangerous critters live in that water. I personally don't swim in the sea. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a deal. They don't, I don't swim in their sea. They don't drink in my pub. Yeah. But, so uh, did you have to adjust the altitude on your mini to, to fly 500 feet? Up? No, no. You, it, she just goes up. You just set, um, just, there's that sliding bar there. You can set the, uh, the maximum max altitude, altitude on. So you just set it up to max and and yeah, I think the the highest I've seen someone take theirs up is about a thousand. And uh, you know, and you're looking at them going, Are you insane? Cass is watching this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And if you look closely you'll see two skinny little blokes standing on the shore there. And that's myself and my um my offside of that day, our truck broke down and I was being paid thirty two dollars an hour to do this. So I was as happy, happy as Larry. <laughs> but yeah, you see the, the coral there, the light color in the water. Hmm. And that's all broken coral. The beach itself. It's a Very beautiful. Cool. Yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that day. I mean, there was lots of footage, but that was what I was able to um, edit. I was so pleased with myself when I did that one. <laughs> yeah. What, what software did you use to edit? Um, oh, good question. Uh, I was using um, 
the edit, video editor in that comes on my Windows. Comes oh, really? On my, on my laptop, yeah. Yeah, which is amazingly, it's probably the least difficult one I've, I've got. I've got three or four vid, ed, editing programs that I can't work out how to use probably. <laughs> Interesting. Like I'll I'll blow it and I'll think that you know the bits between the two lines are, are what's going to disappear and and the rest of the video disappears and I'm left with the bit <laughs> that I didn't want and I'm ah, what what happened to my video? <laughs> right. And then panic. Ah, oh, oh, have I destroyed it? <laughs> like I that Western what... Queensland one goes forever. And in the raw footage, you actually see like uh, well, which is the one coming up, um, or or coming up soonish. But um, that one, the winds were um, in miles per hour, were um, sitting on a steady 24 miles an hour, 25 miles an hour, somewhere around there, and gusting up to uh, 37 miles an hour. And, uh, and the Mini was, it struggled, the poor little thing. It got battered around the sky. And, but um, out back Queensland, if your drone takes off, don't worry about it. It's going to come to earth eventually. And uh, you just walk. It's yeah. yeah, as you'll see in the video, it's flat, dead flat country. We don't have mountains. Well, we think they're mountains, but they're about six hundred feet tall. And everyone yeah. goes, "That's not a mountain." And you go, "Yes, it is. It's got mountain in the name. That's called Mount Kufa. <laughs> it must be a mountain." <laughs> right. But technically, no. If you flew at eight thousand feet above Australia, you would never hit anything. There's nothing that high. Now, yeah. Our tallest mountain's 7,000 and something feet. Okay. And that's Mount Kosciuszko on the Great Divide. Do you have the same... Mountain range. Sorry? Do you have the same rule where you um, you can fly above where you take off? <clears throat> so you can fly 400 feet above where you take off? Yep. But once you go over the off the top of the mountain, you've um, you're in breach. You have to go. You have to go down yep. the mountain. Yep, you have to go down the mountain and maintain that that four hundred feet above ground level at all times. Yep. And uh, otherwise, yeah. If like I thought at first, oh, you mean I can get on a mountain? I can fly around at four thousand feet? You know, whoa, right. excellent. But no, no, no. They they eventually jumped on us all on that and went, no, you idiots. <laughs> if you right. Drop off over the edge. You must go down. Like you can't just fly off a building. Yeah, it, it would be you'd be um, it would be illegal as soon as you um, got your drone off the roof. There's no way you're going to get it down to to the um, requisite 200 meters before you're uh, in a flash. You so yeah, you'd be technically you would be in breach of the law. Yeah, there's there's shady things here, like um, like people will fly off the top of a building and then. Like t for me, like as soon as you fly off the top of a building, you're over yeah. a road and you're over people and you're really yeah. high up in the air. Yeah. And then they'll like fly over to the next building, to the next building. And um, so it, there's all these rules that that we have and we try to abide by. And then I watch all these beautiful drone videos and I know they have to be flying over people. Like there's no way they got that shot without crossing the yep. street or something like that. And then the, uh, the videos where they're going like 80 miles an hour with the DJI FPV drone yep, and like their face is covered. And I know not every one of them have a visual observer standing right next to them watching the whole time yep. and 80, 80 miles an hour. Like there's it's no way there's, it's even damage. in line of sight. Like as nah. soon as you t as soon as you start going forward, it's gone. So <laughs> I've I've even hesitated. I still kind of want the DJI FPV drone, but yeah. I also yeah. I feel like I feel like a naughty boy. Like as soon as, as soon as I get it and start flying it, unless I'm on a in a cornfield somewhere, yeah. like I don't know how to fly that drone without breaking one some rule. Yeah, that's already yeah. out there. They they're um, um, they're trying to accommodate that here. And um, at present, I think using the FPV, you have to um, basically be on a, a model aircraft field, and you oh, must yeah. have a visual observer, and um, and you have to notify CASA. Um, is my understanding of the rules? You'd have to notify CASA that you're doing it, and uh, and yeah, and if you got caught, 
you know, sort of like I see on these videos where they're screaming around buildings and doing loop the loops around the place. No, you did that here. Yeah. <laughs> They'd see that on yeah. YouTube and go, oh, we're just going to ring this guy up. <laughs> yeah. And Anybody like anything going 80 miles an hour, if it hits somebody, it's going to cause some damage. Like oh, yeah, a, a water damage. balloon at 80 miles an hour could probably give someone a concussion, well, much less a, a big Gertie, metal. If I gave battery. you a smack in the back of the head with Gertie, you, you'd know you've been hit. And if it was in yeah. sports mode, which is not all that fast, but it'd be fast enough to cause damage. Yeah. Yeah. I took a branch out with my mini. Yeah. I, I hit I hit the side of a tree and it broke a branch that was a it was a green sapling branch. Yeah, and I was like feet. That's yeah, that's so oh, definitely definitely do you some damage. And uh and it, now the mini too, because the blades are stiffer, it would yeah. uh, it'd cut you up. I mean the mini two's the mini's great, you know, it's got nice, soft, flexible. Don't wear my hat out, man. <laughs> Guess what time it is? <laughs> is it that time? It's that Excellent. time. And I thought we would we would drag it out a little bit. Oh yeah, cool. Um, so what I've done is four people commented with trucker hat or trucky hat for you. Yeah. Um and uh, so what I did was I put you all four on here twice. So you have double the chances to win. I'm just kidding. Yep. It's still this, it's still random between four <laughs> people. Yeah. But um, the mechanism that I found, you can um, you can tally. So what we're going to do um, is we are going to spin the wheel five times. And whoever gets the majority wins the hat. Yep. Okay. Sounds fair to me. And um, Mario Napa, um, he watches at a different time. So it's not going to be one of those you had to be here to win it. Yep. So everybody that that commented trucker hat. Uh, oh, you already got some competition in here. Eat More Possum says don't wear out his hat. <laughs> And then Steven, Steven, Steven Drone says, that's my hat. So <laughs> Everyone's lying climb. So we'll see what happens. I'll go ahead and take it off so I don't stink it up too much. <laughs> Actually, I'd, I'd put moose on right before this, so it's going to smell like oranges. Oh, cool. Um, so here we go. Let's give her a spin. So you one got one. So Gregory Lawler's got one. And I just realized your name's on here twice. So we'll have to tally yep. all the ones on both of your names. Yep. All right. Oh, how's that work? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Spin now, number I two. I thought that was eight more possum. I nearly cried. <laughs> What? This is great. Really the luck of the Irish. <laughs> What's happening here? If this is not rigged, by the way. Just right. I, I did. I did try it like thirty times just to make sure it was very, very random. Yay. Oh, Stephen Jones has one. This is exciting. It's on now. All right. So the, if you get this, you're the winner, right? Yeah, yeah, I am. Actually. Ooh, fingers crossed. Oh, Mario Napa. Oh, oh it's going to be a cliffhanger. <laughs> I kind of think you already won. Actually, no. There could be a tie. That's it. Oh, it's a tie. Whoa. Woo, this is exciting. I like this. So I think we're going to wait till next week to do the, the last spin. 
No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just we'll kidding. Okay, so, so it's between Steve and well, actually it could be anybody's game at this point. Oh yeah. So if someone else idea. ties. Oh, it's a three-way tie. Yeah. The excitement built. All right, Brent, you got to get in here. Oh, Mario won it. Hey, congrats. Good well, job, uh, Mario. Well, that was fun. Yeah, it was, actually. I, was must, I must look into that. That's interesting. And we call that a chocolate wheel here. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's called picker, pickerwheel.com <laughs> is what I used. Yeah. And you can put, put people's names in. and. Yeah, it's a good way of doing it. Yeah, I, I like saw that. on... Even if on I our, did lose. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> on, on Art's channel, it would just spin between 1 and 50, and people would pick a number. Oh, um, yeah. but, but I thought that worked out really, really well. Yeah. Oh, there's my husky in the background. Yep. Yeah, she's gorgeous. She is a yeah. useless guard dog. She would help <laughs> you carry the stuff out to the car, and if you told her she was pretty, she'd get in the car and go with you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, she's she's gorgeous. Oh, where's she hiding? There she is. I I always get confused with my left and right when I'm looking at myself on here. I can't I tell just... what color her what color her eyes. Um, they're uh, sort of a yellow, yellowy green. Yellowy green. Yeah, she doesn't have that startling blue. But, yeah. Um, they, they were actually originally from our um, Mawson, um, sta Mawson, Mawson station on, on the South Pole. She, her um, line of descent is from uh, the Huskies that were used for our Arctic exploration and our Arctic scientists, right up okay. until the nineteen eighties before they mechanized. And then the, all the breeding dogs that they were using to breed the huskies, they then sold publicly in Australia. And uh, here we are. A few years later, I've got my beautiful girl. Nice. So she has a history so, that goes back to the South Pole. Don't you, darling? So, so she would, like, pull a bobsled? Oh, when, when you're out walking with a man, she when she wants to go, yeah, you've really got to hang on. She's, she's incredibly she strong for such a little dog. Aren't you, darling? But, of course, we're tropical here. So in summer, I've got to um, fill a wading pool with ice and, and stuff like that so she can lay on that and, and she stays in the house and gets air conditioning and all that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah. So th this Otherwise, isn't her natural – it's not her natural habitat. So she's no, no, they, too hot they, here for her. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I, it, if I live somewhere cold for about six weeks of the year, you'd be able to hook her up to one of those – scooters that they use for um huskies yeah and, um, and it'd be great but no to do it here it'd probably kill the poor thing and, and if the rspca saw me i'd get a fine <laughs> yeah they would regard that as cruel hey baby do they, do they shed like uh cats do like when they're when, they, when, it's, when they're hot yeah worse worse it's called blowing and they blow their coat it's like my house is covered in it, my car's covered in it. If I go out, if I haven't got husky fur on me, there's something wrong. Yeah. And uh, like even my truck was full of husky fur, and she never ever got in it. That was just what was coming off me and my um and my gear when I'd take it into the truck. They're um incredible, and of course because she's here, um she blows continuously. Like at the yeah. moment, she's blowing. So that's just gosh. Plucking one Crazy. bit out of it, you know, it's just incredible. You just pulled it's, that right out of her. Yep, yep, yep. Now that's just loose hair. It wasn't. I wasn't being mean to the girl. Yeah, and uh, that's just that's loose crazy. hair. And you brush it, and seriously, and she gets brushed every couple of weeks. And there's enough fur there to make a new dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's my, my grandparents had a had a. I don't remember. It was a mutt. I have no idea what kind of dog it came from, but. Um, but it would, it would go in the ponds and catch frogs, oh, kind of yeah, on their cool. farm, 
And yep. uh, so whenever they would, they couldn't brush the dog. They had to like cut the mats. Oh, yep. Like it, their hair would mat up. And so they'd just have to cut all the, they'd shave it every uh, two months just to get all yeah, the, yeah. all the You, you can't shave off. the huskies. They, they're a two foot, two layered fur. They've got the outer fur and they've got a really fine fur that's right next to their skin. And it's actually their, um, their cooling system. So really? if you were to shave, yeah, if you were to shave a husky, you would interfere with its ability to um, withstand the cold or the heat. And uh, so, yeah, you never ever shave a husky; you just brush them. So does that act as as a, as a radiator or is it insulation? Insulation. Both way, both ways. You know, um, in winter it'll keep the the heat in. Like um, we're in winter at the moment, so every night now, instead of sleeping on my bed, she demands to sleep outside. She loves it. But come summer, she'll want to sleep on my bed again because of the aircon. You say you're in the yeah. winter now? Yeah, yeah. This is winter here. Interesting. Yeah, with, what's the t temperature at the moment? Sixty-two degrees. So, yeah, I probably wouldn't go far without a jacket near me. Yeah. If it was a bit lower than that, I'd have a jacket on. If it gets to sixty, I regard that as cold. And is that Celsius or Fahrenheit? No, that's in Fahrenheit. Celsius, okay. um, seven, 17 degrees is my um, break out all the winter gear. Uh, okay. It gets to zero. It's called the state emergency services. We're dying. <laughs> 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 I've only ever been in snow once. I'll never go near the stuff again. I, I was down <laughs> in Tasmania, which is right down <laughs> the end of the country. And, uh, yeah, na nasty stuff, that snow. Never so your climate might be like our Florida here. Yes, yeah, we're very in the, similar. In to the Florida. winter, it's it's like sixty degrees. Yeah. Um, yeah. Summer. It was one hundred and two degrees today. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's here. You know, it can get to one hundred and ten with humidity between eighty and ninety percent. Yeah. And uh, it's just soul sapping. It's it's hard, but I prefer that to the cold. I can always get cool. I can always jump in water. Yeah. But uh, in winter, oh, no. Nah. I just, I'm just not a cold weather man. I went to yeah. Tasmania, and uh, there was there's always snow on Mount Wellington in winter. And I went, oh, you know, we'll go up in the snow. And so asked this Tasmanian, do you need anything special? He said, yeah, make sure your um your boots are waterproof. So I had UGG boots. I don't know if UGG boots. They're just sheepskin boots. Oh yeah, UGGs. We got them here. Yeah. So I got WD-40 waterproof spray and just sprayed them with that, and then went off into the snow. No hat, oh. no gloves. I learned about heat aches, and uh, and I learned that I don't like snow. <laughs> yeah. I'll never go near that stuff again. I was I was living in Tasmania doing removals uh, in uh, Victoria, and I said to them, I said, if it ever snows, I said I'm not coming to work for three days. And it snowed one um one Sunday afternoon. It snowed for about one minute in my front yard, just a light sprinkling. And, uh, and work couldn't work out why I showed up on the Thursday going, I'm here. And they're going, well, where have you been for three days? I said, I told you. If it ever snowed, I wouldn't be in for three days. <laughs> yeah, if it snows, I'm not driving. I'm not doing nothing. I'm just, yeah, it's time to turn the blink, the heater on, shut the doors and hide. <laughs> yeah. The end of the world is nigh. I think that the last time it, right, it snowed in Brisbane was uh, 1928. Wow. There's actually a photo of it. It's just a light dusting of snow. But, uh, yeah, that must have been a dreadful year. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. You were talking about the uh, the coral reef where you are. Um, yeah. And the, the fact that there's not, like, heavy waves. Do you have issues with hurricanes or anything cyclones. like that there? Oh, yeah. Oh, cyclones. Yeah, the, yeah the, it's, it's the same as a hurricane, except it goes clockwise instead of anti-clockwise. The, the, the same as your toilet formation. water, right? Yeah, yeah. If your if toilet water goes the opposite direction, because we're a dry um, continent, our toilets are very are designed for water conservation. So you don't tend to get that whirling because it's just designed to flush with the minimum amount of water. So it goes through with, with force rather than you know that spiraling down the the drain sort of effect. So yeah, people go, oh, does the toilet spin in the opposite direction you go no it just doesn't spin mate <laughs> it just goes straight down <laughs> it just 
yeah, yeah, there's there's no whirling. <laughs> the older toilets, of course, there is. But yeah, it um, if you pull the the plug in the in the sink, the water twirls around clockwise. It's uh, and then one of those. When I was on British things. British Airways, they they called my trash rubbish. Yeah. So what do you call what do you call trash there? Rubbish. You call it rubbish? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a trash can, it's a rubbish bin. Do you have sidewalks or do you just have walks? Footpaths. Footpaths. Yeah. Yeah, that's the footpath. Sidewalks where you just look and go, well, American, eh? <laughs> right. Uh, you know, they're, they're pathways. Do you have All driveways? Footpaths. Yeah, we have driveways. Yep, okay. yep. We have roads. We're pretty modern. <laughs> Do you have park? Well, I didn't know what you call them. Do you yeah, have parkways? Yeah. yeah, there is. Um, there's a parkway down in Sydney, which okay. um, everyone looks at and goes, "What the hell? <laughs> you don't park on it? What do you mean a yeah. parkway?" <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a joke here. You drive on a par parkway and you park on a driveway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, no. So yeah, with language is is uh, is funny because our language has is quite weird even compared to the English, like uh, drongo, we have all sorts of funny words, drongos, drongo's an idiot. So, uh, you know, if somebody calls you a drongo, they're not being, they're not being polite. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and then it sort of, we shorten all the words like Bicky for biscuit, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, all sorts of strange things. I mean, Trucky to me, truck it's, yeah, trucky. Yeah, rather than trucker, that, our <laughs> big rig magazine here for a while was publishing and using the word trucker, and they got so many complaints from all of us that they've oh, yeah. now gone, okay, okay, use a truckies. And we're all going, yes, get it right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's only the young blokes that are going, oh, but no, we're truckers. And, and us old blokes tend to br pull them up qu rather quickly and go, listen, bud. <laughs> you say that yeah. again, gonna have to take you down the back of the truck and have a talk to you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, nah. it's it's funny a funny language. Like um, if somebody's got red hair, they're called blue. What does that mean? Why? It's just it's an blue it... thing. No, no, it's just blue. Got red it's... hair, you're called blue. If you're um, if you're tall, you'll get called shorty. If you if you're minus a finger, your your nickname will be Stumpy. Interesting. And you're really the mouth. Cruel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, um, Greg. Thank God isn't a name you can you can muck around with too much. I'll get Greggles or Greggy. But um, you know, Richard becomes Richie. Uh, you know, yeah. It's it's insane the way we do it. We'll either lengthen the word or we'll shorten it. So if you're going to give me a nickname, what would my nickname be? Oh, let's say Sean, Idol. Well, you're a redhead, so you're, you're going to be blue. Everyone will be going, g'day, blue. How's it going, mate? Okay. And you'll be sitting there looking at him going, what? I'm, I'm not blue. <laughs> and everyone will be going, yes, you are. You're a ranger. Yeah. And That's a, a ranger is a redhead. Yeah. Do you, have <laughs> so, blonde, do you have blonde people? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my my um my daughters are blonde, and okay. uh, yeah, and you know blondies and uh, and the jokes about them. I used to love it. I'd I'd be at work and hear a new blonde joke and just rush home to tell them. Ah, yeah. what do you call? Why why do blondes wear headphones? Because it says breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So she's heard all the blonde, all the blonde jokes and still glares at me when I I come up with a new one. <laughs> yeah, I like that. How, how did the blind get kicked out of the the M and M factory? Have you heard that one? Yeah. No, she was no. throw, throwing out all the W's. <laughs> throwing out all the W's. I like that. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, well, Lord. it's seven fifty-five. Um, yep. Gregory, I want to thank you for hanging out. No, thanks um, for having us, man. It was a yep. riveting live stream. I always like talking to someone because I can't. It's hard for me to talk for an hour and a half by myself. Yeah. Um, no. But we're going to close out the show. So say goodbye yep. to everybody. And Ciao, peoples. We'll catch Thank you on the you. next one. Thanks. Thanks for having us up. Really enjoyed myself. I'm sorry if I may have chatted, natted on too much, but hence my nickname, The Mouth. Nice. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Ha have a good night. Have a good All right, y'all. That was a pretty good show. Um, I want to thank, I already thanked him, but thank Gregory. Thank you, Gregory, for ha coming on and hanging out. Um, Mario Napa won the trucker hat or the trucky hat. And uh, so I'm going to get in contact with him and try to get the hat out to him. And uh, yeah, we're going to sign out. So hope you guys like this video. Please like, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell for notifications for other live streams. And when I decide to put another video out, um, I like to talk about drones. I like to talk about cameras, live streaming. Um, but yeah, mostly live stream right now. So catch y'all on the next live stream, y'all. Peace out. I forgot to hit the end the broadcast button.